Yeah? Hmm. Okay. Damaging in the scratch wall. That does. Oh, perfect. Shin, you know, you wouldn't want that to go and go. And it not go piece up and get the oil out and up into the important stuff. Like that. So, let's go, she's a bit bent now. Hey guys, welcome back to DMAT Customs on YouTube. Dave here in the DMAT Customs garage, which is just my garage under my house if you haven't figured that out already. Uh, I had enough of messing around with brake flaring and Bundy tube and stuff like that for now, so I'm going to move away from the chassis, kind of, and I'm going to get some stuff cooking on the old motor and that, get that ready back, put back in. So let's get it off the floor, get it out of the way, make some space in here is what I want to do. <laughs> let's get at it. Okay, so things get pretty tight in here when you kind of got like full-blown project underway, bits of the old murder mori kind of like laying around and then, you know, the old donk out of the Area 51 project and the seats and bomb truck and other crap and just cleaning apparatus that you can't use because there's such a mess here. But anyway, the task at hand. Got a um, G-body sump off a buddy of mine who had one in stock so pick that up pick up and whatnot the other the other day the other week so i've got to lift the motor up swap out the sump i want to paint the transmission i don't like this this is just how it came to me which was just in this kind of gray paint which i think signifies that it's been rebuilt or something like that so i'm going to strip off all the kind of bolt-on stuff on the trans mask it off repaint the trans and the underneath side of it and there are some other things I need to do on the motor. I'm going to have to do valve springs and uh, retainers and stuff like that. We can do that once it's sitting in the chassis, hopefully. Should be Aldi. We won't have all the front clip and that on it. Uh, and I've always kind of wondered about this. There's these funny little gaps here. When I put bolted these two pieces together, there's a gap here. And there's another bigger gap over on the starter motor side, which I'll try to... I don't know if you can see that a bit sideways there, see there's a big gap there and I thought is there something wrong with this? Are these two pieces not going to work together? But I was just going to run it anyway in DMAC Customs fashion uh, <laughs> but I was watching uh, Vice Grip Garage on the YouTube now it's not a name drop, I was watching it and I learned something from it so he was tearing down a late 90s Corvette to get an LS1 motor and that out of it and he was blowing it all apart and then he was separating the old kind of weird torque tubey thing they've got on those corvettes to um just get the motor and that off it and i noticed it had these two plastic covers kind of like dangling off the side of it and i thought there that's just kind of how they are so did some googling some investigating and they are a thing i just had never seen it before so that's not unusual this is the first time i've had an ls sitting on the floor in my garage. I've had an LS1 in a car for many years, but never had to pull it out. And I never actually had to look that deep into it because they're such good motors. <laughs> there you are. They're like the new small block and that's no denying that. That's why people use them. Well, they're not new. They're actually really quite getting quite old now. We've got a couple of this thing here's a couple of decades old. So, but anyway, so finally figured out what those gaps are about and they are just a factory thing different blocks different transmissions going up to different applications and stuff so they have you know just have these little dust covers that you can buy to put on them but I'm not going to buy them I'm going to have a go at making some little dust covers so before the motor kind of goes in finally I want to try and do that um, as well but before I can do any of that I have to make a lifting bar for the front we've got one on the back but this motor didn't come with the front one so i'm gonna make something up out of some five or six mil plate that'll bolt onto this front head here so i have to take that alternator assembly and that off just to get a lifting thing on there and to lift it up and whatnot because i need to lift it up to do the sump and i'll hang it in the air to paint that transmission as well so 
what's the first thing we do? Listen to the washing machine gurgling away, and 3.5, 3 minutes, nearly 4 minutes of me yabbering on about my plan. <laughs> so that's my plan. I'll start with maybe moving some stuff around in here, put the wheels back on that, so I can push the body so I can move back and forth over here, yeah? Hmm. Okay, I'll do that and then we'll be back. Alrighty, so, got the alternator off. Just got to try and, try and find something. I'm going to tag into these two bolt holes here. I don't really want to take the power steering pump off. Hopefully, it should be all good, kind of bolting off those. When I lifted this in and out before, I didn't. I just used a soft sling, and I don't really want to use that this time because I actually got it stuck in there, and it was jammed in there until I pulled the motor back out um, without cutting it, that is. So, need to get centers, do centers, get 80 mil centers. So I need to find a piece of 5 mil at least to get us, uh, yeah that one's 5 mil and that's bolted, but that's kind of bolted longy ways. What's that for? Oh that's holding that up. Um, so do I take that power steering pump off? To get to do that that's not the end of the world it's only two bolts oh, sorry only two two bolts hold that power steering pump on so i might just whip that off and then i can make a lifting bracket thing to go long ways i'll probably feel a little bit more secure in it so i'll just quickly take that off okay so got that power steering pump off it's scavenging in the scrap drawer oh, that does. oh perfect Got a 5mm flat bar, all I have to do is drill some holes in it and, uh, and then that I can use that as me lifting thing of me so if I just do a couple of holes in there so I can bolt it onto that top, uh, that bottom one and that top one and around there and then just a hole at the top that I can put a shackle into then hopefully that'll be a lifting thing so i just got to measure that up Put some marks on and uh, drill some holes and then we're ready to lift it up once we get the crane inside. Alright, the humidity is starting to go through the roof already. It's, it's a, like, if you watched the last video on brake bundy and stuff, it's been raining for about two weeks and we had flooding and all this stuff. Today it's not raining and tomorrow is not supposed to but I've got a couple of leaks in the roof I've got to fix so I'm waiting for the roof to dry off a bit. So change of plan I drilled an extra hole to give me options to put it on a little bit more of an angle just so it pulls that way and not tries to pull it over and gets hits fuel rails and stuff like that but that's kind of right at like shin knee height so I'll have to watch that should really put a cone around it um, so that's that ready to lift but before I do that I might just take off all the accessories off the old transmission give it a bit of a clean what I can reach, then I'll lift it up and I'll clean the other, uh, the underside, the other side. I've got to take the starter out too, actually. I'll take that out because um, I want to make one of those dust shieldy things. But I might kind of plan that out when I've got it up off the ground or moved away from where it's sitting. Alrighty, so jumped ahead somewhat. Got the old engine up on the crane. Uh, got something in my eye already I was just blowing the dust and that off it so that's good um, <laughs> been through kind of giving this a bit of a clean up that castings on this isn't isn't that flash so I'm not too fussed about prepping that on it I'm just gonna gonna give it a blow over with some hammer finish silvery gummy little gray kind of color just so it's a bit easier to clean and stuff and it's gonna be tucked away up underneath the car you never see it my next question is, well, my next decision to make is, do I pull the sump first, fit up the new sump? Well, do pull the sump and then I don't have to mask around it. I just have to sort of mask off and wrap the block and the uh, crank and everything. Um, less masking, I think I might have answered my own question. So I might pull that, so I'll pull that sump. I'm not going to might, I oh, will pull that sump because it's got to come off anyway. And then I'm going to pull that um, trans dipstick out so I can just mask that off separately well you know so I can get painting that bell housing and that a bit better and then I gotta mask off all the fittings and tail shaft and all that kind of proper so 
I've said about whipping this sump off. Okay, sump's off. Still haven't taken that off, but um, yeah, I'll get rid of those so I can mask those off properly with some new tape. These were just to keep dust and crap out. I can't remember what else there was. Is that there? I've got to take that dipstick tube off and then we should be mask it off rattle can some stuff on there and then put the new sump back on okay so paint booth's ready <laughs> i just thought i'd using this it's kind of like an enamel so it's kind of like fast drying but not super fast drying so if it lands on anything it might stick to it so i thought i'd just kind of cover up the front of the old 51 chassis and the back of the old bomb truck and yeah, my masking's not that flash on the back of this motor, but it's not too critical. Um, you won't see any of that anyway, so I just want to kind of tidy it up. It's got a blue pan for some reason, so I'm going to kind of make it all one colour, hopefully, with this stuff. It's a hammer finish. So it looks like tough aluminium. Okay, so two minutes into it, the nozzle's blocked for some reason, so I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Might try soaking a bit of lac thinners or something, or blow some gear through it backwards. We'll see where we go. Okay, I think I've fixed it. Carry on. Knock my gummy over and start to kill those wellies. Known as. Oh baby, it's getting hot. Sun's actually out now too, so the humidity, all this wet ground and everything's just gone absolutely nuts. <sighs> like, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, sweating ears. Um, so that stuff actually, once I unblocked that tip, actually, it wasn't really the tip, it was kind of the nozzle. I just kind of like took the tip off and gave it a stab against something and it blew whatever crap was in there out of it and um, then it sprayed mint after that, like heaps better. Um, so we're just going to let that dry off now and I've got to do some prep to prep the new sump to go on and what else am I going to do? I've got to bolt the engine mounts on, a variety of other little things that I'll leave this alone for now and I'll go and get that other sump organised I reckon, I reckon. Stay hydrated, yep. Okay, so with the new sump comes a new pickup, right? So it's just a little bit shorter. It doesn't go all the way to the back of the sump like the tr truck style ones. But something my mate said to me that I got the sump off the other day about um, these pickups is that he said sometimes they can come loose and you can end up having it walk down and then it loses all pressure and then it does like bad stuff. And you can get like a, a kind of clamp 
like a C-clip type thing that you can put on in conjunction with this because there's another bolt hole there ready for it so that you can um, kind of have two fixing points holding it in at that end. It's still got that centre one there so that's all good um, or that other end one that holds it up so it doesn't you know, wiggle out, fall out. So I was just wondering whether I go ahead and sort of make a C-clip for this and see whether I can get that to work. So let's uh, have a look see at that, you know, just for a little bit of extra protection, you know, you wouldn't want that to go and go and it not goes suckety suck and get the oil out and up into the important stuff. Yeah, because then it just wouldn't work anymore. It was, okay. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's uh, let's have a look at this. Let's see if I can find a bit of, probably just a bit of three mil plate that should do us for if I had it. Okay, into the uh, drawer of scrap. Don't need much, just need a little bit. And that's all about five mil. Too small. Something like that might work. Probably not too thin. Too thin. That's core 10. Those little half circles are just mild steel. I might make one out of that. Be on the safe side. Alrighty, so I was trying to do all sorts of weird calculations and shit like that, and then I decided I'm just going to drill a hole that this will sit in, and then, uh, which happens to be the biggest on my step bit that I've got, so I'll drill that hole all the way through this, and then I can sit that in there and I can just trace around it twice, you know? So, let's do that. Do a pilot with that, yeah. Get it started with that. Put some safety glasses on so it's trying to avoid getting stuff in my eye again. Let's go. Power stance. Do this. Okay. Now I'll put that drill bit away. Where's that little clip gone? That little clip fell off. Doesn't want to stay shut without it. It's like spring loaded. Good. Oh. oh well. Oh, there it is. Ow. Might want some of this professional stuff, Ken Z. Oh. That's me, uh, the big hole board in there. I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do next. I'm just gonna put that through there. I might take the O ring off just to protect it. Put that through there like that. And then I can mark one hole. And then I'll sort of eyeball a straight line through there like that. So that's going to be one, one, one of them, and then I can go like that, mark the second hole, and they look like they're about in the same place, so I'll take that as a as fact. And then I'm just going to cut this side out of it. Ooh, look like this. Maybe I should give it a bit more. There's not a lot of room where this has got to go, though. So it's the only, the only thing. So if I go around about like that, and then the hole's probably a little bit bigger than it needed to be, but 
too bad. And then I'll cut that side out of it like that. Something like that. Does that make any sense whatsoever? Hopefully. All right. Drill some holes. Cut that out. There, see? <laughs> Hopefully it turns out better than it looks right now. Alrighty, so if you look up in there, hopefully the camera's pointed in the right direction, it's got that kind of like little C-clamp type of thing in there now that kind of just helps hold it up with this extra bolt up the top here, that top one there. So, um, yeah, that was a bit more of a fight to get that in than I thought it was going to be, but we got there in the end, and whatever I got in my eye this morning, I think it's come out, but it's just irritated now, so if it looks a little bit like, that's why. Okay? Right. Finished cleaning up this surface for the old pan, and then I reckon I'll be able to put that back on. Oh, God, it's hot. Just thought I'd point out, like, also, I've been doing some, like, Googling and research about, like, talk sequence and stuff like that, because I couldn't remember how I did it last time. And last time, when I put the other pan on, I did put a bit of silicon on the four corners, or RTV, I should say. Um, this is why, I think, like, some people say you don't have to, because they're an O-ring style gasket and rah, 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 but it's these kind of two seams on each side so four seams all together that kind of have a little bit of spacage and that there so that's kind of what you i reckon is the only kind of point that really requires any uh, rtv so i've heard of people putting it all the way around and stuff like that that's kind of like pretty old school small block shave stuff i reckon but i reckon i'll just put another little fresh dab on each corner and then just bolt this mamma jammer up Alrighty, so let's. Get oh, this is sketchy, it? Underneath the engine frame. Please don't fall on me. I'll be good. Alright. Oh, it makes me dizzy with it swaying, though. Okay, so according to the interview, if you do all this up finger tight and then you go around and talk the uh, whole lot of them down in a crisscross kind of pattern, which is kind of pretty normal. Apparently the torque uh, setting is 18 foot-pounds for these eight mil bolts that I'm doing now and about nine foot pounds for these little six mil mamma jammers which go in there you go there. and we've got one bell housing bolt which goes in there which is what I almost forgot or I did forget when I was trying to take the pan off I had it all done done and I was <laughs> press it just kicked on I was about to go get the hammer out, as I was saying anyway, before the compressor kicked on, I was about to go and get the hammer out and uh, rain some angry down onto that thing. And all of the stuff that never mentions this bell housing bolt, whether, you know, you kind of do that up last. Now it doesn't even want to get started. Should I hit it? Okay. That's them all hooked up. I don't even get out from under here. Ugh. Ah. Right, what else do I have to do before I can think? I've got to do that up properly. I had to get this little bung because it had a fuel uh, oil level sensor hole there, but I'm not going to be using it, I don't 
think. So I've got a bung to put in there for now. I'm just going to get the Allen key and tighten that up. Uh, it's got a crush washer on it. I'm just wondering whether I'd chuck it a little bit of Loctate around there as well. Do you? Don't know, really. Shouldn't need it, should it? No. Okay, I'll leave it off. Can always, if it starts weeping, I can always reseal it. Decided not to put any thread stuff on there. It's got this kind of aluminium crush washer, which in theory should be enough. So I'm just going to crank on that and hope it seals. Except I've got a little short bloody Allen key, so I think I've cut it down for something else. That should do it. Okay, so haven't been doing a lot of filming, but I've been doing a lot of reassembling. So dipstick tubes back in, shifter mechanisms in, and it's all tightened up now. When it was um, when I was trying to tighten that up with it on the body and stuff, the body on it and stuff, I couldn't get to some of these properly because I welded a big piece of sheet metal on the floor and I couldn't reach anymore. Um, so that's all tight. Uh, cleaned up that thing and put it back on in that little bracket. I don't know what that's for, but I put it back anyway. I thought I cleaned that up. It looked good when it was wet. Now it just looks all dry and yuck again. Um, what else have I done? Trans mounts on. Alright, sorry. Battery went flat. VSS sensors in. Still left that mast up for now because I don't know what's plugging in there. I was supposed to leave those masts up, but I unmasked them by accident. Um, what's next? Put the motor in, or should I try and make up some dust shields for, for both sides while I've got it up in the air? I could do it in here, but it gets a little bit trickier. What have I got to do? That's just a little one. I wonder if I could make them out of aluminium and just... There's only one bolt hole to hold them on, so maybe just a little bit of, bit of alley. Where is it? It's buried over there, I think. Over there, somewhere, behind all those bits of sheet metal and stuff, and bicycles and that. So I might start, I might do that actually. I'll make those little pieces and uh, start with some templating, I reckon. Alrighty, so looks like, I mean, could I potentially tuck it back in behind here I possibly could basically just contour that tuck it in behind there it's not going to be close enough to rub in anything I think and then just a simple fold and a hole hopefully that won't go rattle 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 all the time swearing this up like that Knocked it out there. I'm gonna cut there. Maybe just trim that back to about there. And then fold. I don't have to go to about there. Now I'll square it like so. I'm gonna fold down that line there. Just go a little bit more on that. And that's folded there. Now, I've just got to find something to fold this over. I know. Over the ruler. Trim this back. That there. That to about there. It's getting more and more complicated. And trim that out of there. Could go up just the scope. Just a little bit out of there. Do I fold that over or do I just. Trim it up. I'll just trim it up, I think. As long as I put something with a big wash. Where's my pen gone? Oh, there it is. Where's, it? Where's my picture gone? Not my picture. And then just bolt that in there with a, with a washer or something. Is that going to rattle and Well, we'll make it out of aluminium and just see what it looks like. So we'll start with that one. And uh, take them there. Just going to do a little tracer trace around there. Like that. And like that. And that's going to be my slice. And that's my fold. And that's my fold. 
and the hole didn't come out. Just like that, right, I'll just, I'll just tin snip that I reckon. This fold doesn't help. <laughs> this was uh, part of the prototype for the uh, little visor on the bike truck. Enjoy the old tin snippage today. Jeez. <laughs> Does this look a bit rude or what? Might be right, I'll file it up and give it a light slope to straighten out and see what it looks like. Okay, so on the hole, it's not too bad. Got my hole in the wrong spot. I might just wallow that out and put a big washer on there. So we'll call it adjustment room and I need to trim that up there to that corner. And a little bit out of a little bit out of the side there. I see that pin line, yep. Okay, so I'll start with the easy one. I'll just go like this. I should, knew I shouldn't have drilled that hole until I um, <laughs> held it up in place. But live and learn, not really. That's the sort of thing I do all the time. Yeah, I just got a really from up that side really can I do that with the tin snips I don't know I might take a little bit off all the way along make it easier to make a mess of it and then uh, I can fix it up later on that's how we roll at DMAT Customs on the YouTube can I make this curve no Yes. No. Oh, maybe. Not that there. And then just take that little chunk out of there. Like that. Chaka! So, that's okay, she's a bit bent now. <laughs> Just a little bit. That's alright. I guess. Not bad. So if I straighten it all out, she might actually fit in there quite nicely. Okay, so that's the the first little dust cover in. It does kind of have a bit of a tin to it. Um, yeah, I might. Kind of pull it back out and kind of like just clean up the corners and round them off a little bit. Not that it really matters that much. It's going to be buried down under the car. It's really just to keep kind of forward spray and rain and dirt and stones and that out from the um, torque converter and the flywheel and stuff. So I might pull it back out when I'm done the other side and I might just squirt some of that this hammer finish stuff on there just to... Um, kind of thicken them up, dull them up a little bit maybe, and uh, yeah, so, anywho, let's do the other side. Okay, so this side is a little different because I have to allow for, obviously, the, the starter motor to go through a hole in there, so the pictures I've seen of the ones on the, on the interweb have a hole in it uh, to allow for the old starter motorage. Um, this side's a little different. There's more bumpity boops out here, so I can't really just do a straight kind of bendy bend on there. I might have to 
just kind of have it folded here and then a flat fleece piece flat fleece sorry <sighs> getting really hot tongue must be swelling anywho I'll start just chopping up some bits of paper and cardboard and stuff and uh, see what we can come up with mess of cardboard over there so this is my template for the next piece um, I'm going to see whether I've got a hole saw that can handle a 60mm hole. It's only thin aluminium, so it should be able to handle the cut. It's just whether I've got one the right size. Let's have a look. Alrighty, so I haven't quite got a small enough. Well, I've got too small or too big. This is 70mm, I need 60mm, so I'm just going to kind of split the difference and have a little bit of a slightly bigger hole. It should be alright. It's better than kind of me kind of making, the, making it too tight, if you know what I'm saying. So, no, oh. no, oh. find a nice, nice stingy way to use this piece of aluminium. I'll just go like that, press around it. Oh, oh. oh I'm going to cut that hole before I do anything else I need something to drill into. Yeah, that wasn't quite, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, so, choice, what a mess. Change of plan, I'm going to do the fold before I do that final cut down the side. So I want to just have a double check on fit me. Yeah. Hold the camera with my knees. Do the fold and then check it, see where it is as far as that starter motor fitting in there. Hmm. So I think we're going to actually end up having to trim it down to that line anyway, just to be on the safe side, but I'm going to do that fold first. Alrighty, so there it is. Um, fought me a bit, ended up cutting a heap off it. I'll show you when I take it back out and paint it. It's kind of like just this shape now, not the whole cut through sort of thing. Um, because it was fighting me hard out and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And then I discovered that the head of this bolt the starter motor bolt was actually running up against it and against the um, bell housing so like it was pushing the starter motor out of alignment anyway so these starter motor bolts I got from Rock Auto so they're just generic doorman or something like that so the heads on them were just a little bit too big and they were kind of rubbing against the bell housing with not so bad without that extra bit of alloy in there but bad enough when that was in there to kind of be throwing it all out so now I'm just going to take them all back off again clean up some mess chuck some paint on them I'll just do that that silvery stuff okay okay
Okay, so I don't know whether I recorded that, but I was just had a bit of trouble getting those to line up for some reason. I don't know why they used to line up, now they just didn't want to line up, but now they do, so engine sitting in place. Alrighty, look at that. Clearance. Now before I um, swap pans, the old pan, basically I could have slipped a credit card through underneath it and that was it. It didn't touch but it was just about there. Um, so that's it on full weight. Squishing those little bump stops down there. Um, she can still technically roll at this point but she got a flat tire which this one's a bit flat and one of the back ones is probably a bit soft too she would be on one of those arms there or something something would be hidden in the ground but it won't be the sump i'm pretty sure the sump is now yeah it's higher than the cross member so that's a win that's exactly what i wanted oh, for that for that sump to clear oh head rush <laughs> So yeah, motor's back in. Still got to take the chains and that off and put the alternator and stuff back on. And I've got to decide what I'm doing with that pulley. Might just leave it. There'll be enough stuff on top of it, kind of hiding it. So yeah, then got to suss out a drive shaft. I've got that mock-up one that I want to put back in and have a little bit of a play around with the center bearing and just see what it does. Um, when I fully action the suspension, like in its range of where it's going to travel, like laid out and ride height, most likely occasionally get lifted up higher for, um, what do you call it, the old, you know, taking a wheel off and stuff like that. Well guys, that's where I'm going to leave this video on the Area 51 project. Motor and trans, back in, bolted up tight, clearance is good. Bit of a shit fight getting the trans mount hole bolts to line up, don't really know why, just something probably crooked, just probably something me welding or just, you know, like, things just sometimes look, end up crooked, I don't know how it happens, it just does. Um, yeah, so I'm happy with that. God, it's hot, I was just like tripping over and all delirious with the heat and stuff, but that's enough for, for today. You know pull this thing back in and pretty much just shut the doors so as always thanks for watching till next time take it easy peace and tell your greenie friends to buy an ev so it'll be cheaper for us for gas later on peace after all that I've, i left these hanging outside drying on the old in the old bake oven out there um and forgot to put them in before I put the motor in. Got all excited and wanted to put the motor in, so now I have to climb around under there and <laughs> put them in from the top side. Not impossible, just a little bit more awkward than doing it on the old um, crank. So there you are. Till next time, see ya.